I'm Tim, and it's time to help you choose what's on your table this weekend. Well, one of the questions that I get is, what is on my table a lot, or what's my favorite game? And that's not an easy question for me to answer, because I have a lot of favorites. I just love games, um, and I'm usually able to find uh, enjoyment out of almost any game. So it's tough for me to say, well, that's my favorite. One of the ways I thought we could break it down is to say, well, what's actually spent the most amount of time and hours on my table? Now, I have that handy app called Board Game Stats that you may or may not have. And what I did is I went in there and I said, how much time has each game spent physically on my table? Because those are the ones I, I value enough to spend my time on. And I thought I'd count them down for you. Now, before we get into this week's top five, I'm going to tell you about a couple things. First of all, the time estimates, uh, I should be more clear with everybody that the time estimates provided are not including setup and takedown. Okay, so that's from the time somebody starts taking their first turn until the game is officially over. It's also fair to point out that for those time estimates to work, I really recommend somebody having read the, and understanding the rules before you play. Um, obviously, if neither of these things are true, then you're going to have to add some time to the game. The other thing is we're going to change the format a little bit. In the first two episodes, I was telling you why um, you would love the game or what you would love the game or you'd love the game if you like this. This time I'm going to just tell you why is it that we love this game, like our family and our group of friends. It'll get to the same information to you in a way that I think will flow a little bit better and be a little bit more natural. Love your feedback on that. Without further ado, let's get into number five. So number five is Concordia. Concordia has spent 16 hours on our table. It's a two to five player game. It's taken us anywhere from an hour and 15 minutes to two hours. Uh, and that the difference between that is hour and 15 minutes is more of a two player count when my wife and I are playing and we're really experienced gamers. Two hours is a four to five player game. If you have new players at the table, budget an extra half an hour of game time for sure. That's what we find when we have new gamers that we're teaching the game to, and when we had to learn it ourselves too. Now in Concordia, every player is a Roman dynasty uh, during the age of the Roman Empire, looking to expand their own trade network through the use of land and sea colonists. Um, so it's an economic trading game, and everybody has a hand of cards, and throughout the game your hand gets... Uh, your cards, sorry, tell you what types of actions that you can take, and your hand, you're able to buy and draft more cards throughout the game, so you have a more robust hand. Um, so everybody's got a different hand, and they all have a control over what their hand is going to look like at the end of the game, so they can control their own destiny, so to speak. Um, now, the mechanics in this game are hand management, we have point-to-point -point movement, card drafting, and variable setup. We love this game for many reasons, but the top three I'd have to tell you are this. Number one is the fact that you never know who's going to win until the end. So every time you're drafting a new card, that card is actually going to give you points at the end of the game. So everybody has a deck or a hand of their own cards, and you don't know what's in it. So you don't really know who's going to be winning or losing until the end, and you haven't done the math to find out how much each card is going to be worth yet either. It really helps keep everybody engaged in the game, not knowing for sure who's going to win or lose. Um, and it really helps just kind of make it a surprise. Like there's always a surprise of some sort in the final score that we weren't expecting based on how the game was playing. The other thing that I like is that there's different paths to victory. Each of those cards that you're drafting and buying has a different strength to it, so that way it's going to help you find new ways to win. It helps, again, keep people engaged in the game and finding ways to you know, do better every turn or build up more every turn, and that's good. But my absolute most favorite reason why this game is so replayable is I talked earlier about the variable setup mechanic. It's all the different expansions. There are so many expansions for Concordia because it's played on a map and there's all these different maps with different geography on them. And the beautiful thing about them is that each map is actually designed for a specific player count. So sometimes you get games that aren't as great with two players as they are with four, just because of the way it flows. They actually put out expansions and maps that are specifically designed and purposely designed to keep it competitive and suited to that player count. So the way that that works makes this game replayable with any number of players anytime. Coming in at number four we have 
Through the ages, a new story of civilization. Now, some of you have already seen or heard of it or probably played it because this game is on a lot of top 10 lists of all top 10 board games ever made. Um, it's really, really popular that way and for good reason. Now, it's a two to four player game. Its complexity is pretty heavy. Um, I have to warn you about that before you get into it. But if you like that, you will love this. The box says it takes two hours to play. If I'm being honest with you, if you're being smart, I would budget at least two hours and 15 minutes to three hours and 15 minutes to play this game. And if you have new players, I'd also budget probably an extra 45 minutes just because the flow of the game. Um, it just requires people to think a lot about what they're doing. And that's okay. It's a great game that way. Um, but definitely budget time for this game. Now, in this game, all of you start out as a civilization, as the uh, as the theme on the top suggests. And you're going to start in a very primitive civilization, and you're going to start to research things and build your way up to being able to produce more food, resources, science, and culture, and military might. Now, whoever wins is the one who has the most culture at the end. Um, and players go through different ages and turns and selecting different leaders to help them along the way. So if you like civilization style games, this is really great. Now the key mechanics in this game are bidding and auctions, um, income, there's an income phase, action points. Action points means that you get so many actions per turn and that can go up if you earn more action points. Card drafting and tableau building. So there's a tableau in front of you that gets stronger um, and you're able to do more with each turn as you build that tableau. Here's why we love this game. It flows well. It just, once you get into it and you get to see how the mechanics work, it just flows. It, you can feel the flow as you're moving all your pieces around um, and as you're using the guide in front to help you remember all the different steps. And it feels like a civilization game. You are truly building your own civilization and it flows that way. The, the way the game mechanics work, you're actually forced to make progress which is a good thing because it prevents you from getting too far left behind. Now, don't get me wrong. I've definitely had games before where I get absolutely beat like crazy in this game because I made mistakes. But for the most part, you know, you can't get too far left behind because there's different things in this game that actually force you and require you to make progress. There's a good catch-up mechanism. So if somebody gets too far ahead in one way, there's other ways that you can catch up either by, by using your military or coming up late with lots of culture points. But I think the number one reason why this game gets so much play with us is because its app is amazing. Uh, you know, I'm telling you it's spent 16 hours on my table. I can't even begin to tell you the countless hours that have been spent on the app between this, uh, between myself, sorry, my friends, and my wife. The app is super well polished. It's very bug free. The online play mode is amazing and it flows great. And it has an undo button. And so for me and my group of friends, we... Like, we literally are always having a game of this on the go on our app. So it's a super well-polished game. I would recommend it to anybody who would really enjoy a complex game or loves the theme of civilization building. All right, at number three we have Brass. Now, Brass came out in 2007, and it was reprinted in 2018 as Brass Lancashire by Roxley Games. Um, we have had about 20 hours with this game, and we absolutely love it. Now, it's a two to four player game. It's medium to heavy complexity. Now, the box says it's, uh, it takes about, sorry, 60 to 120 minutes. We find that it takes anywhere from an hour and a half for a two player game to two hours and 15 minutes for a four player game. If you're playing with new players, I recommend adding 15 to 30 minutes to the game for sure. And that's without setup. Now in Brass, each player is a competing cotton entrepreneur in the uh, county of Lancashire in England during the Industrial Revolution. Now you're gonna try to buy, build iron mills, coal mines, cotton mills, uh, shipyards and ports where you can ship your cotton to and from and produce cotton with. Um, and you're also going to build canals and rails throughout the game to earn victory points and to be the best cotton entrepreneur uh, during the game. Now, the mechanics in brass are income, loans, hand management, and network building. Now, we love this game for a few reasons. Now, first of all, 
the art. The art is spectacular in the reprint. It is a beautiful game to look at, and that just makes it more fun to play. Another reason why we like it is because once you know how the game works and once you know how to play it, it's super easy to just pick up and play and have fun. Um, my wife and I have gotten to a point now where if we pick up brass, we're probably going to be done in an hour to an hour and 15 minutes once we've set it up because we know what the game looks like. We know how it flows. And so it's just easy uh, to pick up once you have a group of people that already know how to play it and the replayability factor is high. Now, the last reason why we love it is because the reason why the replayability factor is so high is because after you play it and you see how everything shakes out, you just get that itch that you just want to try it again and see if something would be slightly different if you tried something else. It's a game that you always kind of want to be tinkering with your strategy with and trying little, little things here and there. And it's also one of those games where you just don't feel like um, you have enough time to do everything you've always wanted to do, which is perfect because it creates tough decisions. But because of that, um, you always want to pick it up and play it again and see how the puzzle will shake out this time. Really recommend Brass if you can get your hands on a copy for sure. Scythe. Now, Scythe in the last couple of years has spent 26 hours at our table. Um, it is a one to five player game. It has a great solo mode and it can be, actually be expanded to seven players as well. Um, it's a medium to heavy complexity, I would say. Uh, and the boxes, it takes about 115 minutes. Now, I have found anywhere from two to seven players. We're looking at, you know, just over an hour for a two player game with experienced gamers. Um, to closer to two and a half hours for seven players. So take that as you will. Um, a three-player game with new players was about an hour and 45 minutes. So that's how much time you're generally looking for. As well, budget a fair amount of time for setup and takedown of this game. I find it takes about 10 minutes to set up with help um, and about the same to take down. Now in Scythe, every player is uh, the member of a faction in an alternate universe or an alternate history Europa, just after the First World War, or the First Great War, around 1920. Now, all of these factions are located in Eastern Europe, and they find themselves surrounding a factory. Each faction is going to stake out their own territory, recruit more workers, produce resources, build buildings, and explore that factory um, throughout the game, and also try to complete up to six objectives uh, and getting points for doing so all throughout. Um, the game ends when somebody has completed their sixth objective, and it ends immediately. Now, the mechanics in this game are grid movement, king of the hill, tableau building. We have some uh, force commitment and a little bit of simultaneous action, because you can start your turn while everybody else is finishing their turn just before you as well. Now, why do we love this game? Well, there's a lot of reasons why we love this game. First of all, it's amazing attention to detail. It has these awesome little miniatures in the box. Um, each character has a great, well-detailed, thematic miniature to their faction, and they all have their own set of mechs that are thematic to their faction as well. The currency in the game is super attention to detail. Um, there's seven different denominations of currency, and each one um, is from one of the seven factions in the game. Okay, So that's really, really, really cool. There's some awesome expansions in this game as well. Like I said, there's one that will take it to a seven-player game. Um, but there's other expansions as well, and I have found that every single one of the expansions of this game adds something. I've never been disappointed with any of the expansions at all. But probably my favorite thing about this game is I was explaining earlier how you have six objectives to complete. You put out a star every time you complete an objective, and the game is over and somebody gets six. But you don't win by having the most objectives out. You win by having the most coins, and you get different amounts of coins for different things, including objectives. So you actually never really know who's going to win until you count everything up at the end. And that keeps everybody engaged in the game, and it keeps everybody um, thinking about what the best thing is to do next for their faction, because they don't really truly know where they stand. I mean, you generally have an idea of who's going to be you know, on the leaderboard at the end of the game based on how the game unfolds. But I've seen games where people with two stars win the game. I've seen games with people with six get last place or, or don't do very well. So, you know, I just I just recommend this game because you're always going to be in it till the end because you just never know how it'll shake out.
game, and the game that spends the most time on our table is Tapestry at 36 hours. My wife loves this game, so we play it a lot, and I love it too. Um, in Tapestry, it's a civilization game. So it's a it's a one to five player game. Again, uh, a good automa in this game. The box says it takes about 90 to 120 minutes. Again, I find it depends on player count. My wife and I can now play a game in an hour, but we're also very experienced players at this game. So if you've got newer players, 90 minutes at a lower player count is not of the question. Once you get to a higher player count, I have seen games take over two hours before. So it really depends on if you have new players or not. I would add a good 30 to 45 minutes to your budgeted time if you do have new players in the group. Setup is about five to 10 minutes long as well. In Tapestry, you take on the role of a civilization. Um, and on each turn, you're gonna choose to advance up a specific tech track. It might be exploration, science, military, or tech. And there will be different benefits for doing so that affect the game board and your civilization and how many points you can get. Now, the mechanisms in Tapestry are tech track, tile placement, income, there's variable player powers, and hand management as well. Now, why do I love this game? Well, first of all, when you think a civilization style game, you think about, you know, Sid Meier's Civilization or Through the Ages where there's a very, you know, you are a specific civilization and pieces of history are played out in front of you. Um, you know, like in Sid Meier's uh, Civilization, you can choose a leader from history. And through the ages, you're building real world wonders. Uh, in Tapestry, you are a random civilization that has never existed before. It's a completely different take on a civilization game where it's not based on history. It's based on um, fictional civilizations and building them up. It's a completely different take on the genre. So if you're somebody who likes the civilization genre and you want to give something completely different a try, you're like this is going to be a new type of challenge for you completely. Again, I love the attention to detail on this game. It's full of these little sculpts. Look at this one, right? And there's a whole bunch of little sculpts in the game and they're just beautiful to play with. They make the game fun. Um, the, the level of effort, detail, uh, and deliberateness into designing these is so evident. It just makes the game a joy to look at and play. The other thing is that it's a different type of puzzle every game. So you end up with a different civilization every game and they have variable player powers. And so the game's always going to play differently with a different range of scores depending on who you and your opponent are. Um, and they'll interact with each other differently. So it's 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 never the same game twice. You know, we'll often play it and afterwards compare notes on how everything interacted with each other and how it was different being certain civilizations and how it how it affected the game against our opponents and how it made a difference in the final score. So I think that's why it gets a lot of plays is because there's always something to talk about that was different about the last game. We love this game. It hits our table a lot. Um, it's just a really cool game with lots of different pieces that you get to put together at any different time, and I just recommend it to anybody for sure. Well, that wraps it up for another week of What's on Your Table this week, and I hope you enjoyed learning about all of these games just as much as I enjoy playing them and sharing them with you. If you did, why don't you click subscribe below, or click that little bell as well to get notified every time there's a new episode, or even better, why don't you comment below and tell us what's on your table this weekend? 